We've been eating meat for millions of years. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I thought we'd have a look at this article from the Times of Israel discussing how humans and our ancestors have been eating meat for millions of years. Apparently, we weren't omnivores as some people like to pretend. Now, I will let you know for my bias, I try to aim for the ketovore diet, heavily, heavily eating animal products and meat, you know, trying, trying, aspirationally trying to go down the carnivore route, but I still like my cucumbers, guys, and, you know, the occasional onion. But, so that's my bias. And, of course, I drink coffee. Probably a little too much of it, guys. So I saw this and I have to go through it. Because meat is life. So, for two million years, humans ate meat and little else, according to a study. Israeli researchers studying the nutrition of Stone Age humans say the species spent some two million years as hypercarnivores, apex predators that ate mostly the meat of large animals. The study at Tel Aviv University, in collaboration with Portugal's University of Mino, challenges the view that prehistoric humans were omnivores. And that, they, and that their eating habits can be compared to those of modern humans, TAU said in a statement. Our study addresses a very great current controversy, both scientific and non-scientific, said Professor Ran Barkey of TAU's archaeology department, one of the researchers. We propose a picture that is unprecedented in its inclusiveness and breadth, which clearly shows that humans were initially apex predators, who specialized in hunting large animals. There you go. That's the ability of using tools and having your brain and working together in a group. The results, which were published in the yearbook of the American uh, Physical Anthropology Association, have implications not only for how we see the past, but also for our modern diets. Barkia maintained. Well, here's the thing. With our modern diets, the biggest issue in our modern diets are seed oils. I don't care what you say. It's seed oils, completely artificial modifications to engine lubricant. It's just insane. I, there's a, a thing doing the rounds on, on Twitter right now about canola oil. I had to use my little chainsaw, okay? And I know it's not a big chainsaw. It's just a little branch trimming saw, some people were saying in the comments. I didn't have any chain bar oil. So I went to the neighbor and borrowed some seed oil, guys. Because that's what it's for. It's to lubricate your bloody tools. It's not to eat this shit because it gets into every cell in your body. I'm trying to cleanse of it. I'm trying to seed oil cleanse. It's going to take seven years. Just, just think about that, to get it out of your body. And this is only a new invention. Humans haven't evolved with that stuff. It's not natural. And it, it can, well, it's not saturated. So it has the ability to form extra molecular bonds so, well, cellular inflammation, anyone? He cited the fad paleolithic diet, which assumes prehistoric humans ate vegetables, fruits, nuts, roots, and meat, making those foods the most natural consumption. But research suggests that only the last item on the list was on the cave dweller's menu, just meat. For many people today, the paleolithic diet is a critical issue not only with regards to the past, but also concerning the present and future. It's hard to convince a devout vegetarian that his or her ancestors were not vegetarians, and people tend to confuse personal beliefs with scientific reality. Our study is both multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary. The researchers blended genetics, metabolism, physiology, morphology, and archaeology to, to, of tools developed to resolve the question of whether Stone Age humans were specialized carnivores or generalist omnivores. So far, attempts to reconstruct the diet of Stone Age humans were mostly based on comparison to 20th century hunter-gatherer societies, explained fellow TAU researcher Miki Bendor. This comparison is futile, however, because two million years ago, hunter-gatherer societies, societies could hunt and consume elephants and other large animals, while today's hunter-gatherers do not have access to such a bounty. The team examined the acidity of our stomachs, which is high even for predators, indicating a meat diet in which the acid would provide protection from harmful bacteria. This is where people are telling them to eat all this, this 
this stuff for your for your biome, you know, drinking these things, you know, probiotics. It's all bullshit, guys. If you've got irritable bowel syndrome or leaky bowel syndrome, where stuff's getting through your stomach, you've got an illness. It's it's not going to work unless you stop. You take this bloody yogurt and shove it up your ass like a suppository. It's not going to do anything. It's it's all there's so much woo woo and bullshit around food. The whole research is just. If you look at the actual methodology that people use, it's just nuts. That, that's why I'm more. I, I see more rigor in the carnivore and keto specialists than I do in any of the vegans, any of the vegetarians. I'll point you to low carb down under, guys. Have a look at their lectures. There's also, they also looked at fat structure in human cells. Similar to predators, human fat is stored in large numbers of small fat cells, whereas in omnivores, it tends to be the other way around. They further cited the human genome as evidence. For example, geneticists have concluded that areas of the human genome were closed off to enable a fat rich diet. While in chimpanzees, areas of the genome were open to enable a sugar-rich diet. Further, archaeological evidence supports this hypothesis, they argued, including the study of stable isotopes in the bones of prehistoric humans that point to consumption of meat with a high fat content, likely from larger animals. Most probably, as most probably, like in current day predators, hunting itself was a focal human activity through most of human evolution, Bendor said. Other, other archaeological evidence, like the fact that specialized tools for obtaining and processing vegetable foods only appeared in the later stage of human evolution, also supports the centrality of large animals in the human diet throughout most of human history. The researchers believe humans only began moving towards a diet that is much more plant-based some 85,000 years ago, possibly as a result of a decline in larger animals as a food source. So there you go, we've been becoming weaker for 85,000 years. As Darwin discovered, the adaption of species to obtaining and digesting their food is the main source of evolutionary changes, and thus the claim that humans were apex predators throughout most of their development may provide a broad basis for fundamental insights on the biological and cultural evolution of humans, Barakin said. Uh, during a, um, Okay. So there we have it, guys. There we have it. What do you think? Let's, let's have a bit of a talk about this one. Now, of course, my bias is going to uh, be very happy with this article. It's, it's that simple. There's evolutionary basis for the carnivore diet, guys, for having a high-fat ketovore diet, for being in a, in, a, in, a keto, in a ketogenic state. There you have it. Do you disagree? Do you not believe it? Have you tried it? Maybe you should. Guys, check out this video about our keto journey to just share with you how we went down that path if you haven't seen it, guys. Take care, have a great day, and make sure you have a good steak for breakfast. I mean, what did I have today? Bacon with uh, poached eggs. It was a nice breakfast. I'll see you later.